Hello everyone, Richard here from War Panther Corps Ultimate Mode uh, for Kyiv. It turns out uh, this map isn't too hard as long as you're not super ambitious. Um, I actually managed to take uh, every major hex but these two by being really sneaky and probably with better planning I could take this one. I don't know about this one, but I think that Placata or Goose could find a way to take this one. I think this one's a little too dangerous. Um, but I did try like a totally new plan where I pulled back here and set up an army of tiger tanks. But the problem is I need to have enough armor in the south to stop this surge. And I don't have enough uh, anti-tank equipment or tanks to cover such a wide open space. Um, so it just ends in disaster if you try to pull that. So ultimately I have a very similar approach to probably everyone else, but the difference is I, I keep some tanks up here that probably weren't necessary, but I wasn't sure what was going to happen on this line, and just in case my infantry line broke I wanted to have reserves, uh, especially armor because there's some really nasty stuff on this map. I really didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I if I picked the right combination of infantry to hold this. As it turns out, it mostly worked. Um, I had backup infantry here, and I needed to use them, actually. Um, a couple of my infantry units got severely damaged because I think there was an IS-1, and the IS-1 did not give a fuck on uh, any of the uh, non-hero-based infantry. No, actually, that's not true. It was, I think, Pine got badly damaged. Uh, now, that was partly because he took some damage from trying to kill tanks, but he was at 10 strength, uh, backed up by an artillery piece, and an IS-1 showed up and severely damaged him. So, um, even Pine at 3 stars is a little questionable holding. The Pioneers did very, very well. I was super happy with them. So I parked uh, Grenadiers and Pioneers here. I kept Wurmsberger as a backup, and that actually worked out pretty well. Um, and then I had a couple of Auxiliary Infantry that I would shove in at the last second, and, and that worked very well. I didn't really need them. Um, I killed lots of tanks in this area, and I, there was a KV that parked here for like most of the scenario, and I was perfectly happy with that, because it's, it, you know if it doesn't want to attack it in my infantry, that's fine. I parked a lot of armor down here, some armor over here so I could outflank, and by doing so I was able to grab some objectives. Eventually I ground out the entire counterattack and seized this, and I even grabbed some more hexes outside. If this had been empty I would have been able to grab it as well. Um, I got some units to 4 stars, I think I got one hero this battle. I don't really have a lot to say. I took a lot of damage on some artillery, a lot of damage on a few infantry, tanks took somewhat of a beating, and my air force took a beating. Um, and you know, it was fine. I used my air force until the anti-aircraft stuff showed up, and then I said, I'm out. Um, and that was the plan. You know, I'm going to use my air force until it's not safe to use it anymore, and then you'll notice I think around turn 9 or 10, uh, I just stopped using my Air Force because they were so beat up. All in all, about 2,000 prestige and casualties, but I have a lot of prestige, so I have enough prestige for Tiger 2s and the upgrades on the Air Force. So, you know, I think I'm okay to get through 44. We'll see. I don't know about 45. But we're probably okay for 44. Okay, one second. So a lot of my infantry was getting one shot, that was fun. An ambush that basically did nothing. I managed to save uh, a few of these Romanians or Hungarians. I saved a few. I, 
killed all the paratroopers. Oh, I just realized I have this going fast at some point. Paratroopers are pretty nasty. Um, there's a lot of them. I think there's 20 paratroopers, not counting the ones in the air. Okay, stop doing that. You're not really missing much. All that's happening is the Russians are crushing me. So. <laughs> I do think Goose and Tercada will easily do better than me here. I was uh, just happy to survive so the grand campaign can continue. to do the first turn for the AI. I'm just hitting the infantry because they're the more dangerous ones here, I think. I'm trying to save some things, which I could use later. If you put your infantry in the hills, make sure you get double artillery protection on them, because these paratroopers are nasty. <clears throat> I have brought a lot of armor south. There's a lot of open hexes actually, so there's places for it. And I only kept three armored units up north. I didn't use them much. They're just there. I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, so I kept them there as emergency. Uh, the units that really didn't need kills to begin with, so it would allow other units that needed kills to get them. A couple things I had to do, I had to reload on the only time I had to reload was when a fighter would attack one of my fighters. Um, they could sometimes do an insane amount of damage, which kind of surprised me. Because I know they're Yak 3s, but are Yak 3s really that much better than FWs? But what I discovered is whatever the algorithm is to calculate those attacks, if you reload, especially with so many attacks, it's slightly different before the fighters move, and whatever that new uh, battle outcome is, the fighters will either not attack me, or a couple of times they would attack me anyway, but the roles were reversed, and I was damaging the fighter a lot more. Um, which is really wild swings, and I only and I only had to do this like a couple times throughout the. My fighters still took a lot of damage, but I wanted to make sure that they were viable for the second wave. 
It only happened, I think, three times the whole battle. And it wasn't like I had to reload a lot, either. It was just, I guess, like, it was an exceptionally bad roll on those three instances, and the issue disappeared after just reloading once. But my fighters still took a lot of damage anyway. That was weird. It was weird that I had to reload for my fighters. I didn't need to for anything else outside of like experimenting a few times. But I mostly experimented on the first three or four turns. No, like really the first two turns. And then after that I just played. Um, because I, I think I had it figured out. Yeah. Well. Um, the enemy was afraid of my entrenched infantry, and I put really strong units up front, and it made a huge difference. So now I'm just killing whatever I can safely. And then I made a mistake and I forgot to retreat my scout. So that was three points of unnecessary damage. There's a lot of ways you can improve. I got, um... All of my fighters but two to four stars after this battle. That's really good. And the two I didn't was Kittle and Botany. So, but I'm pretty sure they'll be four stars by the end of 44, which is good enough for me. My goal is four stars. Five is probably a silly aspiration. My armor will probably get to five stars by the end, but they kill a lot of units, so. Here they come. <laughs> Oh, I even got my uh, paratroopers to four stars, which is nice. The benefit of 
I, I have my two pioneers, I have one of my grenadiers, and I have pine in there. And those guys are strong enough to deter most things except for the IS-1. The IS-1 did not mind ripping into pine. <laughs> That's a little, it's a little concerning. Uh, but pine is also three stars. So maybe if I get them to four, that will be different. Trying to kill these paratroopers are so annoying. A marginal victory is extremely easy. That, that's all Ricotta and Goose need to know. Um, I don't think a decisive is that easy, but there might be a way. I, I, I feel like there is a way. It's a question of what price do you want to pay to get it. And for me, I'm trying to survive the grand campaign, not through crazy things necessarily. <laughs> and um, the prestige situation is, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough. <laughs> I'm curious what Soren is going to do here on Manstein because I don't think he's going to get the suppression he needs to safely kill the units in the city. And I have a lot of overstrength on them and it's still really dangerous. So I don't know what he's going to try. As you can see, I have uh, a lot of flak up north. That's the hot spot, so.
So I have uh, temporary safety to kind of use my air force here, and uh, I figured why not take it. That is just a normal grenadier, uh, and that grenadier did really well for most of the battle. Quite please. I really like this. How could the paratroopers resist? Got a defense plus two on a tiger. Uh, I'm not going to complain, man, because defense heroes is kind of the difference between life and death in ultimate mode. Having no flak around here is great, um, so it just makes it a little bit easier to dominate in the south. So as you can see, the infantry wall is holding. I did not deploy Oladir this battle.
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of just the same cycle of stuff. I use my planes until I can't. Um... Get the easy kills where you can. How about that 88 gun? That is so much crap. I was shocked that they attacked, but then I realized I had a damaged tiger. Those KV-85s are not afraid of my tigers. Uh, I'm at the point where I need tiger twos. Um, because I know the KV-85s are going to be everywhere next year. Uh, and not all of my tigers are at 4 stars. So many units. That was just, uh, oh, the paratroopers. I didn't know there were paratroopers there. They were going to attack my elephant, but they found my artillery instead. That's actually okay, because it had overstrength on it, and I need to get rid of that. So I'm actually handling the Air Force fairly well, but there's a third wave, and I think that's when the problems started. Or maybe it's this wave, because there's some nasty fighters. Yeah, I'm literally throwing everything I have at their fighters. good though by taking out the fighters my air force is you know able to do things so I stick Wernsberger in there so I can refresh myself Maybe the reason uh, the enemy attacked Pine is because I de-entrenched when I did that shuffle. Yeah, 
Yeah, the elephant. Uh, I've noticed that the elephant is for some reason doing better against the KV-85s. But I don't understand why. Because the, the tigers have higher ground defense. They both have the same initiative. Can someone explain to me why elephants are doing so well against KV-85s on the attack? I don't have attack heroes on any of them. Or an initiative hero. So, I just have consistently noticed this. Maybe it's a, it's, maybe it's a statistical anomaly. But I'm going to keep writing that because I am liking how the elephants are performing. It makes me think that on Rommel, the elephants would destroy the KV-85s. I mean, my Air Force is still doing a pretty good job. Um, I can't complain. It is a hell of a grind, though, defeating everything in the south. I have to admit that. It would have gone easier if I had sent all of my armor south. As it turns out, I didn't need any of it up north. I had the perfect defensive layout. Notice I'm putting double artillery on the uh, paratroopers, and I'm hoping for the best. One of the benefits of not overstrengthening artillery is you care way, way less if you get ship damage from planes. It actually opens you up for um, more strategic ideas. You know, my artillery is mostly useless anyway, so if the fighters want to attack my artillery and not my tanks, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, the enemy's stuck. They can't get their long-range artillery in place. It's hilarious.
So now I stick in my yep. Nice. Yeah, that's a really nasty plan. Yeah, my Air Force is still holding up pretty well. Trying to take that out. I'm anticipating long range artillery, so I'm trying to give them targets. Like, I don't think the long range artillery got in range, so. Look at all that crap. Bomber is out of the mission. Now I can actually start forcing surrenders.
I think that's the third wave. <laughs> Yeah, infantry struggling against the elephant is not surprising. See, they have that long range artillery, but it's so jammed in front of Kiev, they can't use it. So that's why Kiev is so safe. That was my plan from the beginning, and it worked. And then I got a really crappy roll. So a fighter is out of commission. So this is when my air force starts showing wear and tear. But I'm doing this without overstrength, so you know, it's pretty good performance. So now I can start offering up some bait, like auxiliary flak. Yeah, so I got 75 prestige from that. That's also why I'm being so ag aggressive here, because there's prestige to be had. Also sending another tank south because I don't need it. I probably could have sent everything south, but I was still a little weary. I didn't know if something bad would happen up north. Like, it just takes forever for the AI to move everything.
Yeah, not a lot's happening. Just normal, normal stuff. Really bad roll there, but it's okay. I mean, I've beaten the counterattack in the south, so some bad rolls are okay. raining uh, rain in these circumstances is when the tanks will attack so I don't I didn't experience rain until turn 12 I don't know what will happen at heave if you get early rain which is very it can very easily happen so that's the only thing about this approach that I don't know The way around that might be to not move your infantry out until later, like I did. And then when the rain comes, whether in the middle or later, you just pull them out when they get damaged. This is why I have backup infantry. So Wurnsberger is done, and Pine comes back in. bad luck again. I mean, it's raining, but a scout on a river hex, really? I guess my elephant's defense is cut in half when it's raining. Maybe that's why. Then I got really lucky there. That was crazy. But my infantry is getting worn out here. That's because I got Allensberger and Stutkus with me, and they're not three stars. This is one of the spots I had to reload for. No, actually it turned out I didn't reload because that was the best outcome. The very first roll there uh, was actually really good for me. So that fighter can do 8 damage to mine. As crazy as that sounds. That was a spot I tried to reload for a better outcome, but I never got one. So I just got really lucky apparently. It attacked like a 10 strength fighter, and I'm just so confused why it's so good, but I looked and I realized it's cloudy. So cloudy weather is a serious problem for my air force right now. And as you can see, I've got like, most of my fighters are out of commission. I think uh, four of the five fighters I have are badly damaged. I have a badly damaged elephant now, but the elephant did its job, so...
Yeah, but my Air Force, my fighters are badly damaged. One of my tactical bombers is badly damaged. One of my strategic bombers was reasonably well damaged. Uh, but the Air Force held out, which is all I was looking for. I didn't really know what to do with my planes because my fighters can't protect them anymore, so they just kind of hung around. Look at all that long-range artillery not doing anything. It's great. This is the alternative solution. You can try Soren's method, where you bomb it all to oblivion, which I don't think would work very well in Ultima mode. Or you could try my method, which just makes... There's so many Soviet units, you use it against them. So yeah, so I've just, I'm finally breaking through and I'll have control of the bridges here. Artillery hadn't sucked so much, I would have been able to come out of this pretty good. But Pine got damaged, and I think that was bad. But I took out that IS 1. They got like a supply train going back 200 miles.
That has been the kill spot of the scenario. And then I got some bad luck there. But the thing is, pying at 10 strength should be pretty dangerous still. snowing. Oh, that's what's happened. It's snowing, so they don't see the artillery, so they attack into me. Green Pine survives. Notice they don't attack the pioneers, it's really interesting. So I throw in the auxiliary uh, unit now because my, my infantry line is a little thinner than it normally is. So now on the final turn, they'll go after the auxiliaries, which is fine. And a 4 strength T34 is not dangerous. Awesome, some more kills. So I took out all the armor from the first and second wave, which I thought was pretty good. So let's see, how many tanks did they, let's look at the heavy armor, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They only had 9 heavy armor units left. Um, wow, with better planning I probably could take this and maybe this, because this is all empty. And uh, they they actually were kind of running out of uh, units. This is all empty too. There might be a way to snatch that, but I don't know if it's worth it. 
Well, this is Keeve. Uh, I got through Grand Campaign 43. Let me know what you think. Richard out.